And so how the presentation will look like, I will skip the part about my stuff as it was already done. Uh, so we'll have a short introduction about the DRE. Uh, a very short uh, info about the function menu. Skip that. Then we will focus on Nimble stack, uh, what, what it is, uh, what features does it support, and uh, how the architecture of the stack looks like. Uh, we will talk about the uh, um, basic of uh, how to do a basic DLE work with, with that stack, the APIs. And then we will have a, a few slides about uh, portability of Nimble stack and how it was uh, done uh, to make it run on the right OS. And some uh, information about the future work in case somebody is uh, Okay, so we'll just do that. Uh, the history of uh, uh, the was the first uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, specification was released in 2010. Uh, it provided a very uh, low power communication. It, it's basically written prepared from scratch. It, it doesn't uh, work the same way as a classic Bluetooth did. Uh, it was uh, focused on low power, uh, but also the, with low power there becomes a like, uh, lower throughput compared to original Bluetooth. Uh, in 2013, uh, there was extension. Uh, one for it, it increased the uh, flexibility of the technology by uh, adding something called the link layer topology. Uh, basically, it allows uh, multiple devices to be connected at the same time. Uh, one device can be connected to multiple other devices. It wasn't possible with uh, zero. Uh, in 2014, there was a big release for the two, which uh, greatly improved, improved the speed and the security of the uh, low energy. And it also added support for the uh, IP transport over uh, DLE. And uh, two years ago, 2016, 2015, uh, it basically added uh, new files. So, uh, Instead of only one megabit file, we had a two megabit file, so a bit faster. Or we have a coded file, so where we uh, extend the range at the coded speed. And advertising extensions we are out of uh, today. Uh, and last year there was a new uh, specification called Bluetooth Mesh, which basically uh, allows the mesh topology. Uh, so, uh, as mentioned, much simpler compared to Bluetooth Classic, uh, so the device can be uh, simpler and cheaper. Uh, what, uh, short range, typically 100 meters, with a long range can go uh, around 1 kilometer. Operates at IMS band 2.4 gigahertz, so no licenses needed for uh, using that uh, band. It's designed for uh, low energy, so mo most of the devices can operate on the coin cell uh, and it can operate a uh, few years. Well. Uh, the connection establishment is very fast. You can connect very fast, disconnect, and you can drop it. Simple model of modulation, so the hardware is cheap. And in Bluetooth 5, as mentioned, it supports uh, 1 megabit file that can lead to roughly a uh, quarter megabit uh, for an application use case in optimal uh, environment. Uh, to combat interferences, we use standard techniques for the uh, type division, and so on. Uh, it uses a uh, short data packages, so 27 bytes, uh, it can be extended to uh, 155 with data line extension, so uh, not that big. Mm -hmm. it, it uses the 40 uh, physical channels for free for advertising, uh, the remaining are for uh, data transmission. And uh, it has uh, two algorithms for selecting and jumping the channels. Uh, the second one was also this to five. Basically, improves the coexistence with the Wi Fi. Okay, how, it, how the Bluetooth looks like in the logical point of view. Uh, basically, we have uh, four roles. One is uh, observer and broadcaster, which are basically non, uh, which are connectionless roles. Uh, one device is broadcasting, the other devices can listen to that data in one direction. Or we have a uh, connection between roles called uh, central and peripheral. A central is a device that is initiating the connection and is uh, mastering the connection. And uh, peripheral is the device that is, uh, you connect to. Typically, a peripheral is like a sensor and a central device will be your phone. Uh, it supports uh, both encryption and authentication. Encryption is uh, <coughs> IS. Uh, and you can also authenticate so you can 
what type of events uh, and then the other issue devices, for example, see you can uh, complete fairly. Uh, the basic profile you are using when, when you are uh, playing with Bluetooth, uh, low energy is generic attribute profile. Uh, it basically exposes a set of characteristics or uh, attributes uh, as, a, as a database, and then you can use a cat client to basically read and write those characteristics. So, very simple. It, it's like uh, reading an uh, Excel sheet over the files. The, uh, uh, and last thing is a uh, to cap connection with channels. If you want to transfer like a more binary data, for example, you have a for example, serial over RPLE, uh, you can use a uh, cap connection with channels. It is basically a, a logical connection inside the Bluetooth physical connection that can uh, uh, be multiplexed and uh, can be used uh, uh, separately uh, to a gap. And uh, basically, when, when you are transferring a lot of data, uh, it removes the overhead of the gap. So it, it can be a uh, Bluetooth C. Uh, Bluetooth technology is open, you can start uh, the specifications are publicly available, you don't have to pay for, for using that. Uh, and uh, the body behind this is called the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Uh, it consists of uh, 13,000 uh, companies now, so quite a big, quite a big number. Uh, there are two levels of membership, one is adopted at free, uh, and uh, one is associated with trade, but when you pay, you can uh, participate in the uh, development of the future version of the group. Uh, but basically, uh, that body also oversees a process of qualification, which is to uh, improve interoperability of different uh, Bluetooth stacks. And uh, when you want to put a marker that this device supports uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, you have to pass the qualifications. You have to show that you obey the protocol. <laughs> and there's a tool called PTS, which is free for members, and it allows a semi automated uh, testing of the first. Okay, so very quickly about the Apache Manute. It's a project for a, a permissive license Apache Boot Zero, uh, open source FTOS for uh, MCU uh, devices. So it's kind of competitive, right? But it's, uh, uh, it basically provides like a standard features of the modern uh, FTOS. A uh, small footprint, uh, as you can see, less than 68 of RAM and uh, 64 uh, <coughs> flash to, to get it running. It has a rich features of uh, uh, networking, so Bluetooth 5, Mesh, or Unbox, and stuff like that as well. Uh, it's modular, highly configurable. We uh, released, tried to release at the end of the sometimes it doesn't happen, but the uh, last release was uh, on July, next month is next month probably. And it's uh, it comes with own tool for the management. Okay, so new book. Uh, that's a Bluetooth stack that was originated as a part of the Apache Mining project. It lives in the, uh, it used to live in the uh, Apache project uh, sources repository. Uh, it is also licensed with Apache 2.0 permissive license. It's uh, driven by a community uh, under Apache Foundation. Uh, first 1.0 release was done in uh, June this year. Uh, we plan to do releases every few months, but uh, it depends on the case by case basis when we add some interesting uh, features or fix some important parts and so on. Uh, it passes the qualification for host part, we will in the moment explain uh, uh, what does it mean. Okay, so what features uh, we support? We basically support most of uh, Bluetooth 5 features. So we have uh, support for one uh, megabyte, uh, megabit 5, megabit encoded. Uh, we support advertising extensions. Uh, it is low energy only stuff, so it, it doesn't support like a Bluetooth Classic. Uh, it's only for, for low energy. It has support for a full set of camera features, so you can be any of the four supported roles. Um, uh, it supports privacy. Privacy is a feature of uh, a few words about this. Is that, uh, in a way, how Bluetooth connection is created, device always has to advertise with its own address. So you could track device uh, even if you don't uh, connect with where you move with that device. And the privacy feature basically allows you to rotate 
um, that address in a special way that devices without the proper keys won't be able to distribute the address uh, of your device. Uh, uh, so only, only trust that knows the key can identify the random address that is actually this, this specific device. Uh, we support multiple connections uh, and multiple concurrent roles. So you can be central and peripheral at the same time. You can connect to one device and then all the devices can connect to you. Uh, security manager is supported, so we have a pairing uh, which provides you with encryption and authentication if needed. So you can secure your communication. Uh, we also support uh, both uh, legacy pairing from Bluetooth Protocol Zero and secure connections, which is Diffie-Hellman uh, uh, LTQ for uh, Quite secure. Uh, generate attribute profiles so accessing the remote database is supported. Both roles, server and the clients, you can have both. Uh, connection the channels are also supported, so if you need to uh, transfer some bigger binary block or something, you can, you can also do it. And we have a port of a uh, Bluetooth mesh from uh, the field project as well that is running on top of the uh, stack. Uh, architecture. Uh, basically, the stack is split into two parts, one is host and one is controller. Uh, and uh, you can configure to use either of, of that. Uh, why? Uh, if you're running on a single chip, you can have both host and controller, but you can have a controller as a PLE chip on a separate MCU and they can uh, communicate using uh, uh, other type of, uh, of uh, transport. So you have a lot of flexibility on how your application and how your hardware looks like. Uh, it is fully configurable, so you can if you don't have to use all the features you need, you can disable features you don't need. For example, you want to do only a peripheral, and, uh, and then you can disable central role, you can disable uh, features you don't need, and disable some flash and, uh, and memory. And uh, it lives in own repository, so it's no longer uh, part of uh, Apache core, uh, Apache managed core repository. Uh, the controller part uh, it implements fully flyer, so you don't need anything except the radio to, to use uh, DLE. Uh, it uses a standard ACI interface, so you can uh, use it also with uh, other hosts, like Linux hosts, for example. <coughs> uh, currently, controller only runs on uh, Nordic semiconductor chips, uh, mainly because those are quite open. You have uh, access to the documentation of the register, so you can use it as a radio. And uh, it can be, as mentioned, used without the uh, uh, host from, from you. You can use the uh, blues, for example, because it's quite open with Linux. Uh, quite small. As you can see, you only need uh, two kilobytes of RAM and less than 30 kilobytes of uh, flash for a basic configuration. Uh, you will, uh, Communication between the host and the stack is done by AC transport. When you do the combined build on the one CPU, basically it's a copying memory. Uh, when you do an external um, <coughs> uh, hardware for, for control, you can use uh, UART and uh, SPI uh, for communication. There are a few more control, uh, a few more protocols, uh, but we need not support them yet. So if I just have a if someone is using that. And the host itself is also <coughs> fully configurable. Uh, you can uh, disable, as mentioned, a lot of features. Uh, full, with full features enabled, it requires 65 kilobytes of flash and uh, 4 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, RAM usage can, can go a bit higher if you enable like multiple concurrent connections because you need to have uh, uh, storage for, uh, for uh, <coughs> each of the connections support. Okay, so how, how to use the, the host there? Uh, the host provides a lot of APIs for controlling uh, uh, the operations. Uh, so, unlike some stacks like on the Mac OS or uh, Linux, where they provide only a high level API, you have a full control of uh, low level details of the connection. Uh, so, you can do a lot of interesting stuff. You can also shoot yourself in the feed if you uh, use this. Uh, basically, for, uh, for the Operations like scanning, finding devices, connecting to them, and uh, discovering services. You have uh, uh, with APIs in the DLE gap space, main space. They, they're quite simple. It, it looks a, a bit convoluted here, but it's, uh, 
uh, basically the, you provide, for example, when, when you want to start advertising, you provide your own address that you want to use, data you advertise, and uh, compass for the, the two people that are advertising the stuff. The same goes for discovering uh, other devices or scanning. Uh, you start the discovery, you get the callbacks with uh, information about devices around you, but when they should have. <laughs> and the connection is the same. You select the uh, address you want to connect to, and when the connection is completed or it's ready to be uh, established, then you will get a callback uh, with the proper status and the information. Uh, the GAT um, APIs are also uh, in a separate namespace. <coughs> uh, for a GAT client, when you want to read data from a remote device, you have a DLE CAT C namespace that allows you to discover the services on the remote devices by a scanning the database. It allows you to read or write uh, on a specific characteristic and implement a, a program that is installed on top of that. And uh, the last part of the CAT API is when you create your own database. Uh, basically, it is uh, described as a set of uh, Structures located in the array, uh, you specify uh, which uh, profiles you support, what characteristics or elements in the database they have, and uh, you provide the function that will be called when remote devices trying to read or write this access call back. So, super simple. The, 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 as you can see, it can be static console, it can be in the flash, it doesn't consume the RAM, such as RAM. And uh, that's it. The other APIs allow you to uh, specify the peripheral device that will advertise a cloud service, and then you can have a, a central device that can connect to that device and read the information. Uh, yeah. mm, there's a lot of uh, documentation, it's always nice, but uh, looking at the live code is uh, much easier. So there's a lot of uh, samples in the repository where you can look at how to. How to use that APIs. Uh, we have a, a DLE ACI sample, which basically is implementation of the controller only, uh, allowing you to use the uh, UART communication for uh, ACI transport. Uh, we have uh, uh, peripheral samples, uh, quite cool, a uh, PT shell application, which basically is like a command line shell that allows you to call every single API of the, uh, of the DLE stack. Quite useful when you do some testing or uh, uh, just playing around <coughs> with some new features. And that code exists in the new repository in the, in the uh, subfolder. Okay, so now porting. Uh, so, it originated from the Apache Machine, so of course Apache Machine is supported as a as an operating system. We have a port to FreeRTOS, a port to Riot, and there's a working uh, port to the Linux. Of course, for Linux, you have on the host you cannot run uh, uh, the link layer in the Linux. Uh, so, how we do that, that the, the, the different port uh, here is stuck with so many, uh, so many operating systems. Uh, basically, we moved Nimble stack from, as mentioned, from the Apache Minute repository to separate repository so it, it's easier to reuse. Uh, we make sure that uh, all the OS specific uh, APIs are inter uh, are uh, wrapped around so that uh, each OS can implement them. Uh, we re refactor the Nimble host, the Nimble <coughs> code, so that it doesn't use any of the Apache Minute features directly. And by directly, I mean like touching the fields and the structures that are private and so on. Um, and uh, <coughs> some of the missing APIs that we used uh, in the <coughs> Apache Minute are now wrapped as an OS APIs that need to be implemented. Uh, we fix a lot of uh, bugs related to building outside of uh, Apache Minute Nimble, uh, Apache Minute project. And uh, there are a few places where we need to do a conditional compilation, but there are like exceptions from the general rule. And uh, one part that needs to be uh, needs to be copied from Apache Manute is uh, data structures, which are like they're like the core of Apache uh, Manute and Apache Nimble. So things like uh, memory buffers for copying data around and uh, some memory pools and stuff like that, uh, those are used as this 
and there are much money. Uh, but uh, we have a problem that so uh, other OSs don't, don't care about them too much. And then, as, as a last point, we change all the APIs names uh, for the OS specific tasks uh, from OS to uh, BLE and PLE. So, this uh, NPL is basically like call it a nimble pointing layer. So, it's a set of abstractions, um, APIs on top of uh, operating system that needs to be implemented if you want to run nimble in your operating system. So things like mutex system, of course, uh, timers, uh, handling of uh, ticks, and a uh, few other calls. Those need to be implemented. The API needs to be implemented by the OS. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, some some initialization code uh, is like OS specific and it needs to be implemented either in the porting layer or the OS itself, but in, in general it's uh, Quite straightforward uh, to implement this. Uh, the, the, the nice thing about this approach is that Apache Manute, although it's originate, we originated from that project, is not it's, it's not special anymore. So uh, also Apache Manute is basically implementing the NPL interfaces. Uh, so all the supported operating system are across the events. Uh, there is of course main development happens in Apache Manute, but uh, the the way Google code is structured is uh, not uh, very specific to Apache Manute. Okay, and how it uh, turns out that the, the trial port uh, happens? So basically, the MPL port for Rhino was merged into a, a Nimble repository before 1.0 release. Uh, Rhino provides the package uh, that basically downloads the Nimble from, uh, from the repository, it doesn't require any extra patches. So the straight upstream release of Nimble can be built as a package for the Riot. And uh, ex minimal extra setup is needed to do it basically calling few initialization functions. Uh, there's a sample in the Riot in a sample folder, which you can do. Uh, it basically implements a simple peripheral device, so you can start playing with, uh, with the Nimble. What works? Uh, all the Bluetooth core features work, so you can be central, peripheral, you can have GAT, security, very security, uh, and so on. So everything is supported. Uh, of course, if you want to build the combined, uh, so host and controller, you need to use an object chip. That's, that's a limitation of the uh, for, for now. In the future, maybe if some other vendors have opened their radio interface, we can have another radio supported as well. Uh, more or less, the link layer is it's kind of uh, Nordic centric, but it's written in a way that it should be possible to write a, a different radio driver that would run with, uh, with our link layer stuff. What doesn't work? Um, host. Uh, you cannot build only host that runs on the separate the separate uh, MCU because uh, currently only RAM transport is supported. But uh, it shouldn't be hard if someone needs this to write the you are transport, so uh, the host, right host operates on one CPU and communicates with, uh, with the other one. And the uh, Bluetooth mesh is uh, not ported yet in 1.0 release, uh, but it is ported in the uh, upcoming 1.1 release, which we plan to do uh, maybe next month. And the uh, fun fact, the whole porting took place in Paris in May. Uh, it took uh, like Three days of coding to get Nimble running. Uh, all the credits go to Andrzej Kaczmarek and uh, Auke Pedersen for doing that. So uh, three days of work and you have a Nimble running on Riot. So quite uh, uh, quite fast, I would say. <laughs> okay, future work. As I mentioned that, uh, in the beginning of the presentation, the host part is qualified, so you can use it. We are currently working on qualifying the link layer and the HCI interface. Uh, hopefully this will happen uh, in the next few weeks and the next release will have a good qualification. So it's like a product ready. Uh, we want to add support for uh, Bluetooth 5 features that is still missing from free graphic advertising. This is basically a, a set of like <coughs> synchronous broadcasts that you can register to. And uh, we want to improve the samples uh, if needed uh, so that good samples are always better than uh, good uh, and uh, we 
tam sa tým potom na stavu pár jasných, synchronizujú v zadu, že odsú provadí. OK, je to tam teba, je to tam teba, if you, if you don't have to contribute the part, contributing a, a part report is also very important. Uh, we use GitHub, so it's super easy to, to create PRs if needed. Discussions happens on a uh, minute, uh, sorry, on a uh, Apache minute uh, development uh, mailing list, so uh, it's not a separate mailing list. Uh, we, we use Slack for runtime communication, so if you would like to require some quick help, there are always people hanging, hanging around on the Slack. Uh, help <coughs> on the fly. And uh, yeah, I think that's all that I didn't almost. We are a little bit behind schedule, but I think we have room for one or two short questions okay. if there are any. I'm not sure if I heard correctly, but uh, with uh, Nimble, is it possible to have both uh, central and peripheral in one? Yes. Working together? Uh, uh, working together on one device and concurrent. So you okay. can be central and peripheral at the same time. Then I miss her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. I would want to ask about IP over here, mm -hmm. because it's uh, something about uh, yeah, we need to or we come to... Uh, okay, so uh, IP over uh, uh, BLE is using a connection at the channels that we have support for, and on top of that we need to build a simple profile that is basically channeling the IP. Uh, so if you have an IP stack on your OS, it shouldn't be hard to add. Uh, it's in progress. Yeah. It, it's, it's progressing, but it, it's progressing already for a long time, and it, it's not that trivial to uh, integrate everything. So you, you need to OS that has uh, support for S6.1 uh, IP in the first place. And then you then integrate that with uh, new bullets. Does it answer your question? Yes, thanks. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, see you again, and uh, we'll get more time.